The views expressed on the Nerd Realm are not necessarily the views of the Lagoon Out Network or its advertisers. Listener discretion is advised. Do not try this at home. We are trained professionals. You are now entering the Nerd Realm on the Lagoon Art Network, where we bring all the nerd news and more to you. Hey, welcome to Nerd Realm. I'm your host, Havoc, and welcome to the first ever episode of Nerd Realm on video. Normally, you guys hear us on, on radio podcasts, so we've transitioned. Right, I'm unfortunately running solo tonight. 404 has opened up his own venture called 404 Customs. You should go check it out on Facebook. And we're going to see if we can try to get through this as best as possible without him. It's definitely going to leave a void here for us, but we wish him the best and hope his business gets even bigger and better. So, 404, yeah. keep it up, man. All right, let's kick off. Let's kick off, you know, straight to it. Uh, let's talk about the reviews of the Flash and Arrow finales. Uh, for those fans of the shows you guys saw, Oliver Queen going off into the sunset with Felicity Smoke. You know, reception of that has been kind of mixed. Some people didn't like it, some people loved it. I personally loved it. Because that gives us a chance to maybe finally get rid of this brooding, dark nighty era. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I loved for the past three seasons. But let's say, it's time to evolve the character into something, I don't know, more, more Green Arrow. I mean, as we all saw in one of the episodes, uh, I believe it was the trap, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where where we got to really kind of read the headline in uh, that Dr. Wells had in, in Flash about the article in 2024, uh, in which uh, and where it mentions Flash Arrow and sorry Flash and Green Arrow and Hot Girl both save the city and stuff like that. So we got to eventually start moving into that that area. Uh, really cool. Uh, I mean, really, Arrow this season was kind of kind of bland. I mean, there was really nothing major happening other than Raza Ghoul and played played by a really great actor. Actually, I can't think of his name. I don't know that's probably a bad thing to say. I'm not really prepared to do this by myself. Usually, it's back and forth. But you know, like I said, we're gonna get through this. Uh, but Raza Ghoul was pretty much the only real, you know real plot element that was really in this season. I mean, yeah, we had Thea killing Sarah under the influence by Mer by Malcolm Merlin and blah, blah, blah. It really wasn't a really great season, but it wasn't a bad season. I mean, well, there's been there's been series that are out there that have just had a really shitty season. So, like I said, we're moving on. <laughs> then we have The Flash. The Flash from the get-go, they've had maybe a couple of hiccup episodes, but... The Flash from the get-go, it was amazing. Blew in. Grant Gustin was phenomenal. Totally blew the, totally blew the windows out. It was great. Uh, he he played a really great Barry Allen. In fact, it <laughs> inspired me to actually start picking up the New Fifty Two books, which I know is not really close to the series at all. But hey, it got me into buying something. So kudos DC marketing. Kudos. Uh, and all through the season, we've had the the whole quest for Barry trying to go after the man in the yellow suit uh, who, who 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 pretty much killed his mother. So, I mean, he, he was going after that and and well I mean he caught up with it. We got some we, we got we got ran through the ringer. We had a bunch of plot twists about Eborn Vaughn. Uh, I mean, spoiler alert people. Uh, we found out that Eoborn Thawne was Harrison Wells, or Her and Harrison Wells that we knew in the show was actually not even Harrison Wells. Eoborn Thawne took over Harrison Wells' personality to help build the part of Accelerator to make the Flash so he can go back to his time after he get, got stranded here after killing Barry's mom. Complicated? Explaining it, yeah. Go back and watch the series if you haven't watched it. It's probably making more sense. Those of you that have watched the series and caught up to me and kind of understand what I'm saying and rambling about, kudos for you. You're still here. Now, uh, as far as as far as the finale, that was there was a lot of name drops in that. Uh, they even mentioned uh, Rip Hunter. 
who's going to be the leader of the team in Legend and DC's Legends of the Mar, which we'll get to in just a few moments. And I mean, you, I think you have to mention time. Uh, I mean, Barry actually finally got to go back in time to try to save his mother. Which let's get to that for a second. That was freaking awesome when he finally went through the time tunnel, made it back to the made it back to the night, and he got to see Reverse Flash and himself. Uh, probably who knows maybe another couple of years in the future fighting it out you know just like the night he remembers the lightning storm in his living room and the coolest thing was the flash at that time he <laughs> he stopped whatever he was doing and told Barry you know, like well not really told him but told him like no don't do this you don't need to do this trust me it's, it's gonna be a lot worse at least that's what I picked up from that I don't know maybe you guys saw something different comment below in there in the YouTube chats. I'll check him out and I might respond to you. We'll see. But getting back to topic, but having Barry watch his, well, not necessarily watch, but listen to his mom get killed outside that closet door was a phenomenal scene. Grant Gustin really pulled that one off. And him coming back to the future, and, uh, well, the present, and having all that going and squaring off with Eoborn one more time and having this, this, Sort of minor, major character, at least in the series, uh, watching Eddie Thawne shoot himself. I knew he was going to die. I had a feeling. But then they kind of played it all. I was like, oh, okay, maybe. So I was like, okay. And then they turned around and really killed him. And, well, <laughs> caught me off guard and watching Eoborn disappear. But they kind of... I, it's definitely not the last we're going to see of Harrison Wells, or we'll see the last of the Reverse Flash or Yeborn, because we all saw Eddie's body go into the singularity that was formed, which, which go into that. What, <laughs> it was cool seeing you know clips from, well sorry characters from the upcoming Legends of Tomorrow series, like Captain Cold and the girl who's going to play Hot Girl, and see and Martin Stein being there and all that stuff, and we had. We had Flash running up a building to go and try to do what he did in the first episode and try to stop a black hole from forming by running around it. And it ended with him. It made me so mad in a great way because it left me on my edge of my seat. But he was running and goes through the portal and bah, that was it. It was the end of the season. And what was great about that was actually with the idea. This is this is me speculating. This is not confirmed or anything, but other than the fact that the showrunners have have indeed said that they will be exploring the multiverse in at least in this upcoming season and so it's going to be interesting to see what we do as far as as far as seeing what different universes we're going to go see but at the i think what's going to wind up doing is flash is going to wind up going and meeting the time masters which which as we'll talk about later in the discussion for for the Legends of Tomorrow, he's gonna I think he's gonna meet Rip, Rip Hunter in the uh, in the opening of season two, which will set up for Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, so moving forward on that, uh, the Flash was a damn good season season finale. Arrow, mm, kind of hello. Well, we're supposed to get something a little bit better. Probably season three, they're going to go with uh, season four of Arrow. They're going to have a more of a lighter tone, probably in the same vein of Flash. Flash was more successful, and which is a good thing actually, because God, what's DC is milking that that every superhero has to be, you know, grumpy and depressed and sad and whatnot. Time for Oliver to move it around. Like, come on. It's been three years since you've been back. I mean, you got someone as hot as Felicity Smoke after you. You got you've inspired what, like three or four heroes to pick up them, pick up and defend their cities. Come on, man, you're an influence. Start being a little happy about it. Your city is safe. You don't even need to have to really worry about it. But moving on, uh, let's see. I mean, but all in all. I'm ready to see what season four will bring, and for this fall as well as Flash. And speaking of this fall, we have on NBC Supergirl, which recently the trailer was was released, and I gotta say I like it. I really, really do. I never thought Glee would be the 
jumping off point for superheroes, but Melissa Benoist looks, she, yeah, she's rocking the Supergirl outfit, and yeah, that's a hard, believe it or not, that's actually a hard costume to try to pull off and not look like a costume. If that, I know that probably doesn't make sense, but I'm just go with the analogy on this one. It's hard to pull off a costume. Case in point, look at Grant Gustin in the Flash costume. By all rights, that costume is shitty, but for some reason, the the it's the Flash. There's no way you can make the Flash look look super imposing, but yet it's the Flash, and that's what catches you in the illusion. You don't see someone wearing a costume. You see the Flash, similar to how how Chris Evans. When he wears the Chris, uh, the Captain America costume, you don't see a guy in a costume. You see Captain America, and kind of like the Green Arrow costume as well. So you know, but going on, but most of the noise in the trailer. I mean, I mean, she looks like she's gonna do the role justice. And uh, I mean, the thing is, is, is people are being really, really, really harsh on the on the trailer itself as well. Uh, some are comparing it to the recent uh, Black Widow movie, fake movie trailer for, from Saturday Night Live, which was cute, don't get me wrong. But Supergirl, I mean, they're, they're ragging on it because of the fact that it has that same vibe, which, what's wrong with having that same vibe? What's wrong with having that? As long, I, you know, they're superheroes, for God's sakes. I mean, they have a life. Superman has a cover. He works at a Daily Planet as a as a as a reporter who gets shit on all the time by Lois Lane and by Perry White and by everyone because he's a dorky guy until the world needs him he rips off his shirt and bam Superman way to go so I mean her being a personal assistant okay so kind of a decent take doesn't bother me them kind of given the, I guess the, I guess one of the quotes I'm hearing is a girly movie. Person. No, I mean, she she I mean she grew up on a farm like her cousin. She has an adopted sister. I mean, that's how some people act. Oh yeah, so she's going on a blind date. What is she not supposed to date? Those are normal. Those are normal things that someone has to go through. I mean, I'm, not everyone can be all of her queen. Not everyone can be. Be Barry Allen, be socially awkward. But no, uh, when they finally get to it and they show the, show her in action, she sells me. She sells it on me. I like it. Uh, but the whole Jimmy Olsen casting, not even worth talking about anymore, whatever. Uh, I'm curious. I'm curious on how much Jimmy Olsen's actually going to be in the series. I know he's in the pilot, but it doesn't seem like... I don't, I, I'd be surprised if he's in there for, for a while. But I think they're setting up the 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 other guy to be her her, her Felicity Smoke interest, which will be interesting. I mean, hell, I mean, the guy already knows her secret. We'll see how the show goes on. But uh, recently, he got leaked, uh, uh, and which is sad. I mean, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna pilot. I'm not gonna download it. I'm gonna wait till the fall, catch it on, catch it on, on the network it's gonna be on, and I'm gonna watch it in style. I'm gonna watch it, you know the way it's supposed to. I'm going to watch it in HD. <laughs> no, um, I saw another trailer for it and showed her using her heat vision. Her heat vision's actually really cool. It's, it's like a white hot beam instead of like like, like Superman's red beam. So, it's going to be interesting to see that. And uh, I got high hopes for it, so we'll see you in the fall. Uh, I'm really hoping it catches on. It'll be something really, really different. And and I think it'll finally give what 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 what, you know, like, what you know, like a lot of women have been wanting is a strong female lead superhero. I mean, we haven't had one of those since Buffy, in my opinion. I mean, at least not someone we can actually rally behind. Well, we'll see how it happens. So time will tell. Uh, in mid season, CW is giving. Uh, Flash and Arrow, a third spinoff, and it's making me mad because it's making me watch CW more than I probably should with, you know, with already Supernatural, with Arrow and Flash. And now we got, and now we got 
DC's Legends of Tomorrow, which I mentioned earlier. Legends of Tomorrow, uh, it's going to, of course, feature a mix-up of, of villains and heroes from both Flash and Arrow, mainly from Flash. Uh, and you're going to see them squaring off against the one and only Vandal Savage, which caught me off guard. Uh, if you don't know anything about Vandal Savage, uh, I would strongly recommend uh, uh, a Justice League movie, which escapes me now. Uh, Justice League Doom, actually. Uh, that one, that one's really, really good. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> you, you get to meet Vandal Savage in that one, and you get to find out a little bit about him. He's a, uh, he's been a, he's an immortal. He's been around for thousands and thousands of years, and he's always been a conqueror and whatnot. So, uh, Vandal Savage is going to be an interesting character. It's going to be interesting to see him pulled off in a TV series uh, and I mean they're getting a little risky I, I applaud DC for doing that and dare I say they're doing better than Marvel as far as TV and in that front of you know having the ballsy move to to bring these these characters that they may be afraid to touch on in a movie or anything doesn't mean we won't see Vandal Savage in a movie one day. Who knows? Depends on how good the DC movies go, like Justice League and all that. Uh, the Legends of Tomorrow brings together a uh, team uh, led by Rip Hunter, which the actor's name alludes to me, but he's going to be played by the guy who played Rory in the recent series of uh, of Doctor Who with you know with Matt Smith and you know Karen Gillian and and the stuff he played Rory. Uh, so I mean, it's gonna be interesting, and it's really cool because he had that, you know, that Doctor Who kind of, kind of vibe going on, you know, kind of like very similar to like, uh, like, like the David Tennant, Lily Raven, if she was on the show tonight, she'd probably, she'd probably, correct me big time on that. Uh, but I mean, we're going on about this, and they're gonna be leading a team featuring uh, Doctor Martin Stein, half of Heat Wave, no, not Heat Wave, Firestorm. Uh, but we're gonna have two villains, Heatwave and Captain Cold. Which, if you've watched Flash, those two characters are are awesome. I love those two characters. And Captain Cold, he, the guy is like one of my favorite villains on that show. I love when he's actually in the episodes. Uh, it's funny that Wentworth Miller can bring that character to life and use the cold puns. And for God's sake, where's the parka? I mean, <laughs> we're gonna have Hot Girl, which is gonna be really interesting. Uh, uh, I'm not going to have to wait until either season two of Flash. Hopefully they work her in a little bit more and work her into maybe fleshing her out of character before she debuts in uh, in Legends of Tomorrow. Because uh, apparently she's going to have uh, like a past lives complex according to what Martin Stein says in the trailer. Uh, then you're going to have... a uh, this is a really cool one. Uh, you're going to have the White Canary, played by Katie Lotz, uh, also known as, the well, in Arrow as Canary. Uh, in the beginning of Season 3 of, of Arrow, she gets uh, she gets a couple arrows put in her and, and killed, so it's going to be interesting how they bring her back. Uh, she's no longer going as Black, well, as the Canary. Obviously, the Black Canary is, is now Laurel Lance, uh, <laughs> played Played by the wonderful Katie Cassidy, who went from kind of hot in season one to annoying in season two to still kind of annoying in season three, and then eh, okay, she's getting over it now. So she's kind of got an up, and, you know, an up and down, ebb and flow type of thing. But and of course, last but not least, you have the Adam, played by the one and only Brendan Routh, which I've actually met him. Great guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brendan Routh, he. I like his portrayal of, uh, of Ray Palmer. I really, uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't really have a lot of, a lot of expertise when it comes to the DC universe, and and the Atom is, has been a really cool character, and people can make fun of him all they want about him being a so-called fake Iron Man, and him recently, especially in the trailer, if you see it, he's able to shrink and a fake Iron Man. Like it or love it. They beat Marvel to the punch by putting a billionaire playboy, well, not really a billionaire playboy, but putting a billionaire in a tech suit on TV first. They got Iron Man first. They got Iron Man on TV first, in a way. 
So Marvel, step it up. You're my boys, but step it up. So that pretty much rounds out the team, and it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting uh, it'll be an interesting show to see on how that plays in, especially the pilot's supposed to have Flash in it from from the trailer how it looks. It's supposed to start in 2016. More than likely, it's gonna be a mid season uh, replacement, trying to move everything into uh, the next the when Flash returns, similar to what Agents of Shield did did this past uh, this past break this uh, this past uh, mid season. With Agent Carter, which got renewed for a season two, and more Haley Atwell is always a great time. So it'd be interesting to see on what they do moving forward. Uh, now, so I'm really interested to see on on those shows. It's gonna be fantastic. Let's move on to some cutting edge news here recently. Uh, it was been reported that Nintendo was bringing back the Nintendo World Championships on May 20th for qualifying rounds. Uh, that at the time of this, uh, at the time of this broadcast, obviously that's already going on, uh, and and the the winners of those qualifying rounds will square off on June fourteenth at the Nokia Theater in in Los Angeles, the site of E three twenty fifteen, two days before the show starts. Let's take a minute for that. Uh, and the Nintendo World Championships coming back. That's that's a great. That's that's freaking awesome. Uh, they haven't had one in like 15 years. I mean, for God's sakes, it was like the premise of the wizard, in which Buzz brought us one of the greatest Mario games of all time, Super Mario 3. That inspired this shirt. Bam. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> wish I had more information exactly on what type of, uh, on what the championships are going to be like, but, I mean, that, I mean it's phenomenal that Nintendo's actually bringing something like that back after so many years. I kind of thought they forgot about it. Or, I mean, there wasn't an interest in it. Apparently there is, so. So, if any, if any of those competitors actually watch Nerd Realm, or listen to Nerd Realm, or even heard of the Lagging Out Network, go ahead and give us a comment, or give us a like, subscribe to us. And good luck in your competition. I hope you guys make it to the finals in Los Angeles. And, hey, send us a, you know, tag us at Lagging Out. And that goes for any of you viewers as well going to E3. Give us a shout out. Give it a tag. It'd be great. Uh, so, <laughs> Nintendo World Championships back 15 years. If you told me that, I probably would have laughed at you before I even heard about that. Let's talk about Arkham Knight. Uh, let's just talk about Arkham Knight, and uh, as I like to call the Arkham Gate. Uh, season passes. I, I have nothing against season passes. If they seem worth it lately, it seems like I'm gonna have to agree with the mass community on this side. I mean, it's stuff that should have already been in the game. I mean, season passes are fine and everything, but geez, I mean, does do you really need that many skins? And Batman Arkham Knight, yes, I'm gonna pick up the game anyway. I'm not gonna buy the season pass. Don't need it. I'll, I might buy it up later and when it's like on sale on PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live, you know, whatever. But there's really nothing in there I really want to pay forty bucks for. So you're paying sixty dollars and another forty bucks. You're paying almost a hundred bucks for a game that you should have already had most of the stuff already in it. Um, they're giving you a Batgirl story, which I mean, why? We already know what happens to Batgirl. She's a, she's Oracle in the in the in the thing. I mean, in the game already for the past few games. I mean, she's in a wheelchair. And is it going to lead up into her getting shot? Kind of like a killing joke type thing? If so, why? We don't need that story. The Joker may or may not be in this game, which I have a feeling. I have some rumors. Well, not rumors per se, but theories that could be tied to Arkham Knight. I don't know. I mean, yes, he was killed in Arkham City, but this is Joker. How many times has he actually died? Uh, but Arkham Knight, it's... I mean, so far it seems like all they're giving us is a Batgirl story and a bunch of classic Batmobile skins. Don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock someone re re cruising around town in the old old West uh, Adam West Batmobile. Just saying, but forty bucks for a season pass with nothing but skins and stuff, and yes, you're all supposed to get enemies that are going to invade Gotham City at a later date. Eh, I'm okay with that. 
I'm not paying 40 bucks for that. Question is, and I, I want to ask you guys, the viewers, this. Uh, do you think a great game will be snuffed out by bad press of a pricey DLC season pass? Let me know about you, how you guys feel about it. And we'll go from there. And we'll chat about it, even in the message. You can even send us up on the Facebook page at, at www.facebook.com at www.facebook.com backslash nerd realm or you can even comment this section on the lagging out uh, Facebook page at, at www.facebook.com www backslash lagging out I can't speak tonight I apologize uh, uh, before we close out tonight uh, we guess let's talk about E3 for a minute E3 is the big show it's the big show that all gamers and video game journalists and everything dream over. It's it is the show. One day lagging out and Nerd Room will be at lag at E3 one day. We're gonna make that happen one day. It's gonna be awesome. But until then we can only catch it through live streams and and media announcements and everything through through via other reader sites and everything. But let's talk about it for a minute. Let's go down the there. I'm not expecting much to come out of this E3, to be honest with you. There's not really much I'm looking forward to. There might be something you guys are looking for. And if there are, ch chime it down in the comment page. But uh, when it comes down to it, I mean, I'm really looking for what, actually what Nintendo's going to be bringing to the table. I, I'm a huge Nintendo fan. If anyone's who's ever seen or heard any of our previous videos and previous podcasts, and everything, you guys know I'm a big Nintendo fan. But uh, despite their, you know, their market bundles, which, eh, they make mistakes just like anyone else. But they they roll with the punches. Now, as far as Nintendo, I'm sure we're going to get another Pokemon game. Not no surprise there. I'm curious to see on if they re reveal any new Mario games. I'm hoping they get some third party, a huge third party, in flood and in infusion because they need it. Uh, I'm ready to get some more details on the new Legend of Zelda as well as the new Star Fox, which uh, a recent Treehouse a few months back, I think sometime last year actually, uh, there was a there was a video which Miyamoto and and uh, and President Iwata they were they were playing, and they were kind of just showing off Legend of Zelda, which looks fantastic if that's just the primary build for it. Uh, they said that we're gonna get. Uh, you know, Fox McCloud and his team before we get Zelda, which is, I'm totally okay with that, which is supposed to release in spring of 2016. Fine with me, take your time. Uh, I'm hoping we get something new as far across the board, also from Nintendo. They need to kind of get creative a little bit. Not we music creative, we all saw where that went. I um, want to get some more intel on. on the release, like what is on Rock Band, uh, which I'm sadly I'm more excited about Rock Band than I am Guitar Hero. I I like Guitar Hero, but I wasn't like a huge fan of Guitar Hero just because Rock Band just was seemed more fun. But um, as far as Microsoft, uh, I'm not expecting much on their end either. Um, I'm expecting to of course hear more more information about Halo Five Guardians. Uh, probably any Gears of War, probably that 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 unofficial, secreted, uh, you know, probably Gears of War remake, or maybe the Marcus Phoenix collection that they keep saying is not coming, and they're denying, and then you see leaks and everything happen, and all that mess. But I'm I'm hoping we get some more Gears of War stuff. Uh, I'm probably gonna get a new Forza, you know, the the normal stuff. Uh, for all you Call of Duty fans, yes, you're probably going to get more information about Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and, you know, what they're going to do. I'm, I'm hoping from Ubisoft I get some more information about uh, about The Division. That game has once again been postponed again until spring of next year, which I'm so mad about. I wanted to play that game. Um, so I'm trying to think of some more, more stuff. Um, but really, Microsoft doesn't really have really much that's going to really surprise me so far that I'm almost for certain about but it's E3 anything can happen Sony needs to bring up bring something out I have a PS4 and it's just sitting there and the only thing I play on is Battlefield 4 and and DC Universe Online that's about all I play on it will get enough that really attracts me on 
PS4 that I can't get on my Xbox One because I have more friends on my Xbox One than I do my, my PS4. But, so, I mean, I think Nintendo's going to be the one that's going to really kind of catch my attention, followed by Microsoft, uh, Sony, like I said, they got to work hard to, to get something from me. And I'm hoping this year is the year that Sony brings out some game busters. I mean, we're not getting Uncharted 4 this year, which sucks. Um, and, I mean, so we'll see what what they bring out. I mean, because, I mean, Ratchet and Clank's not, but the, the, the reimagining of Part 1, which coincides with the movie, which comes out, which I'm excited for that. So we'll see how that happens. And so my E3 hopes this, this year are not very high, but... That's usually when they usually throw something out that surprises you. So we're going to catch that when it comes out. So, so on behalf of Nerd Realm, I hope you guys enjoyed our first ever video broadcast. So This has been a presentation of the Nerd Realm with Havoc and 404 on the Lagunart Network.